Welcome to the glassworking shop. Well, while I was editing the last video, I realized, wow, this video is long, and the second part is almost exactly like the first part, with minor differences, so I decided to split it in half. Actually, I thought about just throwing away the second half because it's almost exactly like the first half, but hey, it's already shot, you know, it might be ever so slightly entertaining or informative, so I'm now uh, creating a new little intro to make it seem a little less awkward when I split it up, and we now rejoin the regularly scheduled program in progress. So now I'm gonna use the safety wire pliers and the safety wire to put together a hexagonal array of bullseyes. And then I'll basically do the same the same operation again. Only this time I'll be using the the seven bullseyes. My seven bullseyes are not perfectly uniform in size. My, my pole didn't come out as nice as I had hoped, but as far as the design is concerned, it might even look cool having them a little bit non-uniform might actually not be a bad thing for the design. My safety wire has kind of slipped a little bit. So, I believe I will still be able to accomplish my goal, even with a This one isn't going quite as perfectly smooth as I'd like, but I will probably still be able to make it work. Safety wire off. Check. Not hot. Not gonna hurt me. get them tagged together before they start separating.
much better. <clears throat> yeah, having a slightly non-uniform size distribution might actually be a cool part of the design. I don't know. But by the time it gets all squeezed together, nothing's going to be uniform anyway. The glass moves where the glass wants to move. It goes where it wants to go. And this piece, when it's incorporated into the design, is going to be squeezed fairly aggressively. So, even if it was perfect at this stage, it wouldn't stay perfect for long. And that's not a problem. As they say, in the software world, it's not a bug, it's a feature. Which is kind of one of the fun things about the world of glass and about squeezed glass that part of the, the adventure is just seeing how it flows. And even though my future research, I'm going to be seeing how perfect and precise I can make glass patterns, possibly even including CNC cold working and more elaborate kinds of molds and squeezers and forming tools just to see how precise could I make it. Could I make a piece of glass to machine shop tolerance? Could I make perfect circles and perfect lines and perfect squares and perfect geometry? And that might be fun, but it's also fun just to let the material do what the material is going to do and be pleasantly surprised by, wow, I didn't expect it to do that. So, our little hexagon guy here is just about ready to go, nicely compacted. Hopefully all of its air has been driven out. And as I did on the previous operation, I'm going to be cylindricalizing it. I think I'm doing pretty good on keeping my boiling under control. I occasionally see one little sparkle here, a little sparkle there, but I believe that I'm mostly under control and mostly have got nice, smooth, air-free glass. stripe on this piece, having said all that I said about boiling, the outer stripe on this piece is going to be North Star Canary Yellow, which is not the hardest color to work with, but certainly not easy either. So. Give it a moment to cool down. Flip into... Hopefully I 
think I'll let it rotate for a moment before going into positioning mode. So grab a couple of striping rods, get my rod holder ready. Okay. Make sure that I have a sufficiently oxidizing flame for being very careful. Just a little bit. So here we go. Somewhat more sensitive color. Got to be just a little more careful with this. Substrate needs to be hot enough to stick, but not so soft that I end up with divots. Carefully preheating the rod. Let the glass have its own time. Don't force it. Canary definitely works different from the jet black. And of course for anybody who's watching who isn't a glass worker, it may surprise you to discover that different colors of colored glass behave differently. All glass isn't the same. Some colors are stiffer, some colors are more sensitive, some colors are damn near impossible to work with. Uh, kind of preheating the the rod, trying to keep my stripes parallel. I still haven't learned the trick of avoiding that little booger at the bottom. I don't think anybody totally avoids them. I think even the, the better glass workers have a little booger, but they know the trick of how to minimize them. And that's something that's on my to-do list to learn. So many things on the to-do list. Glass is the most difficult thing I've ever attempted, and I've attempted a lot of difficult things. If it was easy, I'd be bored by now. But glass is such a wonderful material, such a wonderful art form, and I just love glass so much. And one of the nice things for me about learning glass work, the material itself is so inherently beautiful that even my most horrid, awful beginner pieces People who don't know anything about glasswork looks at them and, sa and say, oh, they're beautiful. Just because glass is beautiful, not because my work was beautiful. Of course, when I showed my 
first beginner pieces to my first teacher. I made the first pieces before I had a teacher. He said, I've seen worse. And I have no doubt that he has. I am so lucky on this adventure to have had such excellent teachers. And hopefully, even though I'm nowhere near an expert, hopefully somebody who's just getting started in this wonderful art form will find my videos useful. Maybe, maybe answer some of their questions and give them a little help along the way. Unfortunately, the glass world has a very unfortunate history of keeping secrets. In the old days in Murano, if you tried to tell people how the work was done, well, actually, if you tried leaving the island, they would hire assassins to track you down and kill you. So, I fully and completely believe it's the ethical duty of the expert to teach. And although I'm nowhere near a glass expert, I share what I know. The more I know, the more I share. And I really admire Revere, Torch Talk, anybody else who makes instructional videos. I know that I watch them and learn from them. And it's not just glasswork. I've been watching machining videos. Tom Lipton, Ox Tool. A bomb. Blacksmithing. Walter Sorrells, the knife maker. The University of YouTube is an amazing resource. And I really love being able to contribute to it. Stop, droop, stop, droop. Return to center. So, just about reached the end of what I can do here on the Inquala. Trying to get that last little booger out, the last little twist. Get them back on center. YouTube is amazing. You can get physics lectures, graduate level physics lectures from Nobel Prize winners. And of course, the machinists that I watch have 40 years of experience in the trade. And you know, even though I'm a lot better machinist than I am a glass worker, I've been building things for 60 years in wood and metal and software and electronics. Even though I'm not yet a master machinist, I still like to share everything I learn. And it's so fortunate to be able to watch the machinist with 
40 years experience in the trade showing how to do extremely high precision work. Okay. Time to switch to handwork. I've actually been thinking about would it be possible to tilt the Inquala vertical and use gravity for pulling? I haven't tried it yet, but it seems like it might possibly work. So, just finishing up the end here, getting some of that unevenness taken care of. And now, I'm going to start preparing for the pull. I'm heating the ends, trying real hard not to overheat and boil this color. I'm getting a little bit of boiling on the nubbins, but they're just trash anyway, so who cares. It's feeling really sloppy and out of control, which tells me it's almost time to pull. Let it stabilize for a few moments. I'm aiming for a piece approximately a half an inch. seven inches of usable material. So I'm trying to get that knuckle all the way to the end. I'm not so not so concerned about the left end because the color extends further than the than the core. So even if I did completely get rid of that knuckle probably wouldn't be useful material. So that is about as good as I get as a puller. A little bit by little bit as my skill improves I have no doubt that I'll get better at this. And as I said, my teachers, the really experienced people that I've seen, they make it look so easy. They just pull the most perfect, beautiful, one pull, one shot, perfect, beautiful. But that's what I can do. So, into the kiln it goes. Now, for those who don't know, no, I, don't, I have no idea who's watching, if anybody's watching these videos, I have no idea if anybody's watching them, but if you're an inexperienced glass worker who has just bought a new GTT torch, when you turn the knobs off, don't tighten them. Turn them off barely. Touch the, t the, the end of the travel. If the flame is gone, that's turned off enough. People constantly over-tighten over their GTT knobs, 
and then wonder why the torch isn't working right anymore. You barely tighten them. Oh, look at that. I still have a little bit of... Having said barely tighten them, I didn't tighten it tight enough, so... <laughs> well, hey, you know, that's how it goes. Um, anyway, that concludes today's video. And for those who are watching for entertainment, I hope you had a little fun. For those who are watching for education, I hope you learned a little. And for those who are just kind of like have it on in the background and aren't paying attention, well, hope you're having fun doing whatever you're paying attention to. So thank you for watching. It's been fun.